Hi everyone, welcome back to another gameplay of BTD6. So right now I'm going to show you the brand new map uh, that has been added in this very uh, last update, uh, Quiet Street. And I'm going to show you Halfkush, Impobable and Chimps, the, the usual three uh, gameplays, the three difficulties that I uh, play and upload videos on, because I think that these are going to be the toughest game modes. And so I'm going to start right now with Halfkush. I will be using Obin as hero. Uh, he's one of the four free heroes you can get in the game, so uh, you don't have to buy it. And therefore, uh, even if you're a beginner, uh, you should have Obin unlocked. And, uh, and then, uh, once again, I will be going without monkey knowledge, continues and powers. So this strategy will be able to be used by everybody. As long as you have uh, the towers and the upgrades unlocked, you're going to be able to, to use this one. Uh, now, the start is very important because of the fact that this map is quite tricky. Um, the, there are the balloons coming from both sides at the same time. So after some tries, I've I found this spot to be the best one for the duck monkey to start with. You're going to place the duck monkey closest to the top. And then here on the right side of the range, you just want to cover with the range of the duck monkey the turn here. You can see that the path here turns downwards. So that's what you're going to do. And you're going to set the duck monkey on a strong. And in this case, you're going to lose one uh, life in round three, and that's uh, totally fine. Unfortunately, uh, you're going to lose the vast majority of your lives in round four because of all these blues uh, grouped that come out that, uh, well, are going to just be impossible to be destroyed. Um, and then here you should have 75 lives remaining. So this is like the best setup I was able to find to have 75 lives remaining. And uh, then here at the end of round four, what you do is you place another monkey, in this case on the top side. Once again, you just focus here on placing the monkey closest to the bottom. And then with the range, once again, just following the path. So when the path here turns upwards, you wanna just touch it, just like this. Um, now here in round five, I just recommend uh, uh, like placing both the monkeys here on first. So don't leave them on strong, just place them on first. You're guaranteed that you can actually destroy all the um, all the balloons. But then very important here at the start round six, when the greens come up, you're gonna have both the monkeys on strong because you're gonna be able to pop the green balloons fast enough. Then you can set them back to first and that should be enough to pop all the balloons. So remember this very little micro that you're gonna need is gonna uh, be just because of the fact that in this way you can actually pop all the blues. If you don't, if you leave the duck monkeys in strong, you're gonna end up uh, missing some balloons, you're gonna end up losing some more lives. And remember that lives lost means also less cash. So you wanna maximize the amount of um, the amount of balloons you pop, not only because you don't wanna lose a many lives, but especially because you don't wanna lose too much cash. Right, round uh, uh, seven and eight should be easy here. Well, depending exactly on how you play out, you can see this green balloon that can be quite annoying. So it's going to be a life that you're going to end up losing. Uh, but then that should be it, I think. Yeah, one more life here. Oh, actually here, I yeah, messed up. Because of the fact that at the start here, round eight, uh, you're going to start once again with both the monkeys in strong. Because this maximizes the amount of balloons you can destroy. So both the monkeys on strong, and you're gonna have all this first part of the map on strong. See these greens, when they come out, they can actually pop them. So see, now there isn't any more the gremlin. And then you're gonna set both the monkeys on first. So when the balloons start to approach the end, and uh, you see that they go around and then they leak, right? And uh, right before that happens, you're gonna set the monkeys on first. And uh, yeah, that should mean that you can pop like almost every balloon. I think you only lose one life. You can see here, I ended up having 74 from 75. So yeah, switching the duck monkeys from strong at the start to them first, once again, just maximizes the amount of balloons you can destroy. Uh, and that's of course uh, what you want. Uh, then right here, just leave the duck monkeys on first because of the fact that once you reach 398 cash, you're gonna sell quickly both the monkeys and you're gonna place Obin. Unfortunately here messed up because I had the wrong hockey, um, but you wanna just do it like as quick as possible. 
I know that if you're playing on a, a mobile platform, you might not be able to use hotkeys. So this may be a process that uh, may make you lose more lives, but don't worry. Uh, it shouldn't really be that many lives of difference. And just try to place Obin like as fast as you can, closest to the top and to the right side. Um, so yeah, that's just my, my advice. It's very important placing Obin like around nine and not waiting until the end of round nine because of the fact that these lives, you're gonna lose them regardless. Uh, because of the fact that both the monkeys are very bad against all those screens that came out in round nine. So you will not be able to, uh, like you're gonna lose around, uh, uh, you're gonna have like 62 lives remaining or something like that if you just sleep the monkeys. And you can see that if you place Obin and you try to place Obin quickly, you're gonna lose less lives. You're gonna have 70 remaining. So. Uh, and then Obin is going to be level 2 right away, so it's going to also have more experience. And that's why in my opinion, like it's better, even if it's halfway through the round, to, to do it and to place Obin right away. A very good thing about Obin is the fact that his basic attacks can just follow up the balloons. And you can see that you were able to pop the balloons on the opposite side. Uh, and he has two layers of damage, so once again, you can just maximize his, uh, his output and you can already pop all the balloons. So that's of course super super uh, nice. Uh, now here uh, you want to play round uh, 11 uh, trying to you know have good RNG. Unfortunately Obin basic attacks are RNG based so when as they turn in the air you know sometimes they're going to behave differently. So for example here I'm going to try Obin on strong. Let's see if I can actually pop at least one more yellow here. Yeah here we go. So it's just about having good RNG. You could see before that yellow was able to sneak past. Now I was able to pop it. So uh, I also recommend you to try again until you can eventually have the RNG from Obin basic attacks uh, correct. And you can try to play a little bit with that RNG, trying to change Obin uh, you know, targeting and trying to see if that eventually uh, works. Round 12, this is the round where like as soon as you have Rumbles, you're gonna drop them down. Uh, it doesn't really matter where they're going to be dropped, they're going to be on the path of these balloons, so they're going to help you out. And then right here you should have, uh, uh, you should be close at placing the druid, so I recommend you here to go slow, and then to place the druid as fast as possible, closest to Obin, and then closest to the top. So that's pretty much it. Leave this druid on first. And remember that druids are gonna benefit already from Obin's level two. They're gonna have more pierce. And now also there are some very uh, good uh, buffs on Obin that is gonna benefit even more. For example, the third upgrade in the top side. So the druid of the storm uh, is gonna uh, buff also the druid of the jungle and the druid of wrath. So uh, now it's uh, even better um, combo uh, druids with Obin if you're using both. So that's why I'm using here both of these towers. And now with the Druid, you can see you have uh, no problems uh, against the Blins. I just recommend here once again, round 15, when the uh, pinks come out, to use Obin's level 3. Uh, or in case you see any Blins, like being able to push too forward, right? Uh, especially be careful about the Blins coming from the top side. Because these Blins, like if they're not destroyed right here, they're gonna leak very quickly. Instead, the Blins coming from the opposite side, you can still see them, you know, in all these top sides of the map, so you can react uh more um with more time so that's just it all right once again here going slow but it should be good especially be careful about the fast balloons for example here also this regrows sometimes depending on rng one uh if one of these regrows from the bottom can sneak past then it's going to regrow back to yellow and it's going to be impossible to to be destroyed so as always, just recommend to go slow and to make sure that you can um, you can have good RNG. If you don't, remember, just restart the round. Placing a ninja now, closest to the top and closest to the right side. So Druid and then Ninja. Normally Obin and a Ninja combo, uh, once again, it's also very good and then it's very nice. Round 19, you're going to use Brambles here when this uh, pinks are almost sneaking past Obin, I think. So right now, for example, right? 
Ninja100. And again, you want to use Bumbles in this round. Now go slow here. You should be able to pop everything with both the Druid and, uh, and the Ninja. But, uh, but yeah, just go slow, just in case. And use Brambles as soon as it's up. Ninja 101. Oh, there's a pink there, sneaky pass. Rip. And I don't think I can destroy it, so I'm gonna retry and hit this round. And um, and yeah, well, once again, as I said before, it's most of it, it's just RNG from Obin like basic attacks. So you can try to manipulate that if you just change slightly like Obin uh, targeting. Oh, I forgot here, Ninja 101. So let's try to place uh, Obin on strong and then now on first. Let's see. Uh, yep. So you can see that now I was able to pop everything. So it's just RNG, really. Uh, sometimes also the totem position is going to change. So that also may, uh, may change RNG. Unfortunately, like every time that you're going with Obin, RNG is going to be involved. Uh, and, uh, and so like this Brambles positioning and all the stuff can be can just change between one round and another. So just make sure you optimize as much as possible by just restarting and by trying to change uh, something. I don't know if you could see there, but halfway through round 23, like as soon as uh, Brambles were up, I just used Brambles. And now I got this Ninja 201. Now with the extra ninja pierce, I'm a lot more relaxed. And Obin also now level six means that the basic tags can pop more balloons and they also move faster in the air. So that's more likely uh, that you don't miss any balloons. And, uh, and now I will start building the um, wizard, wall of fire, very, very important. It's a tower that's very cheap that can pop a lot of blinds. And even if it's been nerfed in this very last update, I still think it's a, it's a very uh, good tower. So I recommend to use it. Now here on 28, for these first lap blinds, I just recommend, like as you pop the lads from the left side, to use Brumbles, just in case your towers will not be able to destroy all those pinks and the yellows. Um, because Obin is the only one that can pop lap blinds, so that's why you're gonna need to rely a lot on his RNG. And the most important thing that you have to look for is that when Obin attacks the balloons from the bottom here, you have to destroy the lap balloons in the top. So you always, uh, your uh, basic attacks, always have to destroy the lads in the top, so like it's happened here in round 30. If you, if you don't, if you don't destroy the lads in the top side, that means that they're gonna be able to push a lot forward and uh, uh, yeah, that may be a risk, so just recommend here to go slow and to always see if you can pop the lats in the opposite side first and if you can do it then that should be uh, enough next is of course a wall of fire zero to zero uh, wizard here we go ninja should be able to handle all these camos by itself you don't even need brambles And then now the next key round is of course round 40, how to pop uh, the MOAB. Now the best way I was able to find to optimize both the positioning of these towers and uh, and how the MOAB behaves, because like map class balloons are going to follow a complete different path from normal balloons. You can see that MOAB balloons are coming from both the bottom and the top side all together. Uh, map class balloons instead are always going to come from the bottom and they're going to follow actually this uh, the road so they're gonna follow this um, middle path right here they're gonna turn they're gonna be here in the center then they're gonna do this circle still staying in the center like this and then they're gonna leak from the top side so it's a complete different uh, path because of the fact that it's gonna be further away from your tower so it's not so close as these balloons see but it's gonna be further away um, and so for all those reasons like the best position I was able to find is to actually a sub right here so you remove the obstacle in the top side uh, and you place this sub closest to the bottom and to the right side 
you get the sub 100, 101, and then here during round 37, you're gonna get it uh, to 01. With all being basic attacks, with Wall of Fire, you shouldn't have any problems against Labyrinths, so that's why I haven't really, I don't have anything else against Labyrinths. So here we go, sub 201. And you can see that the sub can really exploit the fact that these towers in the bottom are giving range to it, so it can attack it. And here, very important, use Brumbles for round 37. Uh, because of the fact that all these camos, even with the sub and the ninja alone, um, cannot, be, cannot be destroyed that easily, so I just recommend using Brumbles for, for that reason. And now you can see that uh, Brumbles now can also uh, be uh, dropped in uh, uh, in the road, so in the inner part where actually map class balloons are gonna uh, gonna go past. Now here's sub two zero two. All right, here we go. Uh, now here is this around thirty nine. So another thing that I recommend you to do, uh, just because it could help in round forty, is at the very beginning around thirty nine to use Brumbles. Uh, if you're lucky, these Brumbles are gonna be dropped around this area, like in this case. Uh, I think this is a pretty lucky spot. Um, and therefore, if these Brumbles can survive around 39, then these Brumbles uh, can uh, do some additional damage to the mob in the next round, because remember that Brumbles can last two rounds. So uh, that's the reason why I think uh, trying your luck at the start around 39 can be can be can be good can be helpful but uh, uh, you know despite your best efforts these brambles may still be consumed as you could see there they were still consumed during round uh, 39 because of you know the the balloons around 39 are just too much so if that happens don't worry one set of brambles around 40 should be enough and what you're gonna do next is you're gonna just place an uh, glue gunner here right what you're gonna do is like place the glue gunner closest to the left and then Remember that the path of the, the mobs are gonna follow is this one. So it's not this one, like the balloons, but it's this one. It's a more internal one. So you wanna have the glue gunner, like it's in front of this path, all right? And then just get the glue gunner on strong, 110. You should have enough cash to, to get these upgrades. And uh, now this round, in reality, is super, super easy. You wanna just wait for Obin to attack the mob. Then you use Brumbles. So Brumbles should be dropped where Obin is attacking. You can see those brambles right there. The glue gunner should be able to glue most of the balloons coming out of the mob, so the ceramics. And then you can see that you can handle, you can just pop all the other balloons super, super easily with the sub, with the wall of fire, with all being basic attacks, with the druid. So that's it. Like round 40, in my opinion, is, uh, is super, super easy with this uh, setup. And then you just sell the glue gunner because it was helpful just for round 40. Uh, you get some cash back. You can get this wizard 0 to 2. Very important for the, um, the increased amount of camos that will come up, especially in round 42. And, uh, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just upgrade this ninja 301 and then 401. So right here you can use Brumbles if you see well, like when the top ceramics can almost sneak past Obin, that's when you can use Brumbles if you want to. But uh, you shouldn't need Brumbles for those ceramics, like you have enough damage with this wall of fire, with also the sub, remember that even if the balloons can sneak past, you still have the sub can, that can attack them in all this very last part of the map, so um, yeah, it shouldn't be a problem. And yeah, from now on, uh, the strategy is actually super easy. Uh, like, uh, the only thing you have to be careful is, of course, against the uh, the most critical rounds, like round 63, right? Round uh, 75, um, round, uh, round 80. Well, actually, round 80 is also super easy. But uh, j just the, you know, the, the ceramic rushes, then the camo lab balloons, how you handle those, the 45 moves around 64 as well can be quite painful sometimes if you don't prepare in time so just remember to 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 prepare against that but then it should be it should be easy so that's the ninja 402 I also got caltrops why not it's just another uh, type of damage that I'm gonna have then I'm gonna get this wizard now 032 
remember that uh, uh, when you get this third upgrade, you enhance Wildfire and you also enhance Fireball. And now after this last update, the, the enhancement is even greater. So you definitely want to always go for this Dragon's Breath. You always get as well double Wildfire. So it's not just the fact that with the basic attacks of the Druid, you do now fire damage. So you apply damage over time. It's also the fact that you're gonna have double world fire, and that's that's a huge uh, benefit in my opinion. Uh, so here a yellow actually sneaking past. I don't like that. I didn't use Obium's Brambles, but I guess it might be it might be needed. Uh, or actually here I can just go with this Druid right two zero two first before getting the the Wizard. Just to have also Heart of Sun Thunder, the lightning here that can change, that can chain uh, between the balloons. Remember, the most important balloons that you have to pop are the ones from the bottom, because of the fact that if they sneak past, then you only have the sub that can attack them. Because they can see that the ninja, the ninja doesn't have enough range. Also, the druid doesn't have enough range. Obin, so uh, only the sub can attack those balloons in the opposite side, and that's why you wanna. You want to always uh, pop the balloons first, the ones coming from the from the bottom, from the left. So in that way, it's guaranteed that then you can handle the balloons um, on the opposite side. That's the wizard 032, right? So now double wall of fire, damage over time, and uh, enhanced fireball, doing a lot more damage with it. I recommend at this stage to also place a boomerang right here. Uh, just placing it because it's gonna give some more range to the sub and it's gonna be another tower uh, that later on, especially for round 63, is gonna be useful against the uh, ceramics. So that's what I recommend to do. Right. Don't worry about mobs because even if mobs can, uh, uh, yeah, that was bad though. Even if mobs can uh, go past to the fences, what happens is because the fact that they follow a more internal path right here, they're gonna also be closer to your towers when they go on the opposite side. So they're not gonna be up here, but they're gonna be here. So you can see that with the ninja you can attack them, with the druid you should be able to reach them, and that's why it makes it, uh, it makes it uh, easier. The important thing is that balloons don't go past because otherwise they're going to be more distant. But mob class balloons is not such a huge problem because of uh, the fact that they're going to be closer. Alright, so I just want to place Brumblester just to be able to pop the mob a little bit sooner. And now I'm going to get this Druid of the Storm, so 302 Druid. Very important because now it's going to benefit from Obin's level 9. You can see here, they're going to do more damage and they're going to have larger storms so they can push more balloons backwards. And yeah, this is going to be especially helpful against the ceramics that will come out from the mobs. So even if you pop mobs very late, for example right here, you then can blow backwards to ceramics and you have a ton more of time to, to deal with them. So that's why I like this Druid of the Storm uh, placement as well. You know, we can reach this other side, so that's uh, exactly what, uh, what you want. And now another thing that uh, was uh, nice in this last patch is the fact that now you can decide where um, the wall of trees can be can be placed. So in this case, you can just click here on the targeting, and uh, as long as it is in range of Obin, you can drop wall of trees. Uh, and therefore, you can decide if wall of trees, you know, you want to drop it closer to the bottom side, closer to the top side, closer to like in path of the balloons, in path of the mobs. So that's just uh, very nice indeed. And therefore, just I recommend to try to place it here in this top right side, right? So that like the mobs coming from the bottom here are not gonna directly go inside of it. They're gonna be able to sink past. So you can really only uh, target the balloons that might uh, go past your first defenses. So that's what uh, that's what I recommend. And I'm gonna just get now this uh, boomerang 302. Oh, actually, it's still in range. So, this wall of trees can still destroy the mobs coming from the bottom. 
I guess I'm gonna need a village to increase Obin's range to be able to place this wall tree so that it, uh, it will not be uh, in range of the balloons coming from the bottom. Alright, resetting it. Try to reset it as fast as possible because remember, the more rounds you have world trees, the less cash is gonna give you. So uh, that's why I recommend to try to reset it like uh, as early as possible. Just make sure that for the start round 61, you can place a complete new world trees. That's the that's gonna be the most important thing. And also another thing that I recommend is the next world trees because round 63 is ceramic rushes. The ceramics are not gonna follow the Moa path, but they're gonna follow the Bloons path. And therefore, when you wanna set the world trees on top of uh, like which spot is actually this one right here. Uh, it's pretty much like halfway through the the Bloons path and the Moa path. So in that way, it's gonna be guaranteed that these world trees can handle both Moabs and both um uh, uh balloons right because it's in, it's in the middle i'm gonna try to place it like around here right should be good that's the bfp it should be quite easy and you also have world trees so don't don't worry actually these world trees are full right now so i might have uh, yeah one red balloon there sneaking past but i didn't really like the fact that i was uh my world trees like didn't work now here I have some cash, like normally here what I do is I like to place uh, an alchemist trying to boost uh, ninja and druid, right? So probably an alchemist right here, could be could be nice, 200. Zero, zero. And this might be enough already. So I'm gonna just set the wall trees correctly. And I can even use like brambles as well. Try to destroy these bombs a little bit earlier. And yeah, that should be that's a lot better than before. Uh, yeah, as I said before, at the start around 61, you want to reset wall trees. I did it a little bit late, but uh, I should still make it in time. Uh, because like uh, for the beginning of around 63, you should have a new wall trees that you can use. Uh, sorry, halfway through round 63. That's the most important thing. You want to have a world trees available, and you want to have a world trees that you can you can somehow use. So uh, yeah, that's just uh, that's just it. I'm gonna get also an alchemist here 200 for the mixodip for this next round. And uh, now this round should be already uh, good enough. So as I said before, you just have to worry about the. Uh, about the fact that you're gonna be able to refresh these world trees during this round and if you can do that then that's totally okay i even have brambles here that i could use and see here i can reset now the world trees right i can get all this nice cash and that's it so it's uh it's very simple um round 63 and uh yeah you just want to do this Small trick, remember moving wall trees in a spot where you can both uh, target balloons and also map class balloons. For example here, these 45 moabs could be could be a problem, but because this wall trees is new, you can see that you can tank all of them. So uh, yeah, that makes it a lot, a lot easier, of course. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just set these wall trees um, yeah, actually up here again as is as it was before. Because of the fact that like normal balloons, I should be able to handle them very well. Like until round 76, I will not need a wall trees in the path of the of the balloons. So I'm gonna try to reset this wall trees here as fast as possible, right? To get the cash. Uh, Alchemist here, the one in the bottom, 400. Buffing ninja and druid, of course. And yeah, from now on, like it should be a lot easier. So I'm gonna start going a little bit faster here through the rounds. Even these fortified uh, moabs like uh, shouldn't uh, shouldn't be a threat. 
uh, and I just recommend here placing a village like closest to the closest to the right side and then to the bottom as you get then more range you should be able to reach this wizard and Obin. If you have both of these towers in range of the village that means that everything is uh, placed correctly and everything is fine. And now you can see that with the village increased range and with the alchemist buffs the ninja can actually now attack the balloons in the opposite side and also the druid can do it even if it has a slightly less range but uh, you can reach now the balloons in the opposite side so that's of course enhances a lot more the, the total uh, attacks and the total damage that they can do even on uh, normal rounds and so not even considering like more class balloons. 200 village increasing the attack speed and now you're gonna also go with this alchemist 401 so in that way you can buff three towers and Obin should be in the next tower that receives the brew so you have three three brews now and uh, yeah that's fine then I'm gonna now enhance this top alchemist so I'm gonna get it 300 And now before getting this alchemist 400 though i'm gonna get this uh, sub 203 so i'm gonna increase uh, slightly more the attack speed of this sub all right world trees has exploded so i just recommend to refresh it right away and now round 676 is coming these ceramic rushes uh, with this setup you shouldn't have any trouble destroying all the ceramics in one go so you don't need world trees but just to be safe, what I recommend you is to once again set the world trees as you did for round 63 exactly in the same manner. So in a spot where you can hit both balloons and uh, both ceramics. And uh, so that the, the world trees that you're going to place in round um, uh, 76, uh, so the new one, should be in path of the other balloons. So it should help you against the, uh, the regrow rush. So that's just a, what I what I recommended to do. So see here, tanking a little bit the those regrows coming from the left, and uh, yeah, it's just to it's just to make everything a little bit more smoother. Uh, and then you can just go back to the world trees where it was before. Just wait here, Obin, to not be buffed by the alchemist, because look at what happens. Like if you place. A targeting when Obin is buffed by the alchemist for example this spot see now what happens if when Obin loses the alchemist buff see that it resets completely back to a spot that's pretty bad so that's why you wanna wait for Obin not to be uh, with the alchemist buff so you can see his actual range and then you can set it up uh, correctly so in this case right here Around 78 you can uh, refresh world trees if you want to or if it explodes, especially for the second rush that is camo. And, uh, and for that reason as well, another thing I recommend is to just go with this village 2 to 0 with camo detention, especially for the druid, so that the druid can blow backwards those ceramics, uh, the uh, ceramic rush. So that's just uh, my, my advice, but you can perfectly fine handle all those balloons even if you don't get the village with camel attention you're gonna just need to probably reset the world trees uh, and then last thing for round uh, uh, 80 is just uh, getting here this sub 204 uh, now, right now with the alchemist 400 the sub also receives the brew so uh, why not upgrading it and uh, yeah that's it so that's the strategy for this map you know at, at the at first sight, it can be a pretty complicated map, but then as you as you figure out uh, where to exactly place your towers and what to do, it becomes a lot easier. And yeah, this is round 80, you're not gonna need any, any other towers. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, see ya, bye bye.